something enormous is taking shape in northern China, and it's not speculation anymore. Satellite images from the Dalian shipyard reveal massive hull sections that experts believe belong to the new Type O for aircraft carrier China's first nuclear-powered supercarrier. If confirmed, this ship could redefine what's possible for ocean-going operations and global presence. In this video, we'll uncover how these images were verified, what makes this project extraordinary, and why it marks a turning point in China's naval evolution. The story begins with a series of commercial satellite images showing something unmistakable as huge, rectangular hull modules appearing at the Dalian shipyard in northeast China. These structures weren't visible in earlier images from just weeks before. Their sudden presence has sparked global attention because their scale and arrangement match what would be expected from the construction of a massive new aircraft carrier. Experts analyzing the images quickly notice several details that hint at advanced technology integration. The sheer size of the modules aligns with what engineers would require for a vessel exceeding 110,000 tons in displacement. Their orientation near existing shipbuilding infrastructure used for the Fujian, China's last carrier, strengthens the case that Dalian is now hosting the next phase of the country's carrier expansion. This method of construction, known as modular assembly, allows large sections of a ship to be built separately, then joined together with remarkable precision. It's the same approach that dramatically shortens build times for modern vessels. The fact that new sections are already visible suggests work has moved beyond preliminary design and material preparation into full-scale fabrication. Observers have also pointed out patterns in the layout that may correspond with electromagnetic catapult tracks, the kind used for launching heavier aircraft. If true, this detail would place the Type 004 in an entirely new performance category allowing it to operate larger aircraft and drones that couldn't launch from ski jump decks. Perhaps most tellingly, the imagery from September shows these structures occupying a dry deck previously cleared of other projects, the sign that this ship has priority status. While Beijing has made no official announcement, the evidence indicates that the Type 04 has transitioned from blueprints to physical reality. These developments confirm that China's fourth carrier isn't a rumor anymore, it's rising block by block. And what's inside those blocks is what makes this project truly revolutionary. The Type 004 is being described by analysts as the single biggest leap in China's shipbuilding history. For context, its predecessors, Hulianing, Shandong, and Fujian were conventionally powered. They already represented major progress. But the new vessel's design suggests an entirely different class, a nuclear-powered electromagnetic launch supercarrier. Estimates place its displacement between 110,000 and 120,000 tons, potentially making it the largest carrier on the planet, even surpassing the U.S. Navy's Gerald R. Ford class. That's more than a 10% increase in tonnage, which translates to greater endurance, more aircraft capacity, and larger support facilities on board. Early projections indicate it could carry over 90 aircraft, including stealth fighters, airborne early warning planes, and carrier-based drones. Its nuclear propulsion system is rumored to draw from the same reactor lineage developed for China's Type 093 and Type 095 submarines. A design proven for efficiency and reliability, nuclear energy allows for a virtually unlimited range, providing the ship with the ability to remain at sea for months without refueling. This autonomy is what elevates it from a regional asset to a truly global range platform, equally. Significant is its EMALS electromagnetic aircraft launch system. Unlike the steam catapults of older designs, EMALS uses electromagnetic energy to accelerate aircraft smoothly, enabling launches of heavier, more advanced jets with greater safety and efficiency. This technology gives flexibility to the air wing a mix of crewed and unmanned aircraft and positions China among the few nations capable of operating such systems. The modular hull structure visible in the satellite images demonstrates China's confidence in building large warships faster than before. The Dalian shipyard has evolved into a facility capable of assembling multiple super-sized blocks with precision, reflecting a leap in industrial sophistication. In short, every piece of available evidence points toward a next-generation carrier designed for longevity scale and sustained global operations. 
The combination of nuclear power and advanced launch systems marks not just a technical milestone it represents a statement of industrial maturity. But to understand the full significance, we need to see what it means for the world's balance of maritime power. So, what does this all mean beyond the steel and engineering? The Type 004 represents more than a ship, it's a declaration of technological self-reliance and ambition. China's earlier carriers trained personnel, tested catapult technologies, and refined carrier-based aircraft. This fourth vessel integrates everything learned over the decades into a single, nuclear-powered platform built for global operations. With nuclear propulsion, the Type 004 could stay deployed for extended periods without the logistical support that conventional carriers require. That means a single deployment could reach across multiple oceans, supporting missions ranging from humanitarian relief to scientific exploration, maritime security, and long-duration presence. The design emphasizes endurance, flexibility, and self-sufficiency qualities central to operating in distant regions. From a technological perspective, it also signals that China's shipbuilding and reactor engineering industries have matured to handle incredibly complex, high-energy systems safely. Developing a marine reactor for an aircraft carrier is a milestone achieved by only a few nations. It requires immense precision in thermal management, shielding, and control systems to maintain safety and power stability at sea. Successfully fielding this technology would demonstrate an industrial capacity on par with leading maritime powers. Equally important is what the Type 04 suggests about the future of aviation at sea. The expected EMIL's catapults mean not only greater launch efficiency but also the ability to operate advanced stealth fighters and carrier-borne drones like the rumored J-35 and GJ-11. That combination could turn the carrier into a mobile airbase capable of operating in coordination with satellites, submarines, and other assets a sign of a fully networked navy. Finally, the modular build approach reflects a broader industrial transformation. Chinese yards are building faster, smarter, and at greater scale. If progress continues, the Type 04 could launch before the decade's end. That timeline, while ambitious, would align with China's wider modernization goals to field one of the most capable and sustainable naval forces in the world. The appearance of its hull modules in satellite imagery isn't just a sign of construction, it's a sign of confidence. The ship's real message is clear, China intends to master the technologies that define ocean leadership for the 21st century. What began as a few bright reflections in satellite images now points to one of the boldest engineering projects on Earth. The Type 04 is not just a carrier, it's a symbol of innovation and capability. If completed as expected, it will redefine how nations operate across the world's oceans. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you there.